Hey guys, today we're gonna purge a tank. I have, uh, I've been looking forward to this build. This is gonna be my, what I'm calling my dream build. Um, I got a hold of this tank from a local guy, it's a propane company, and uh, it's a long, skinny 500, and I think what I can do with this thing, somehow, I'm gonna have to be creative, but I think I can build one of those old school, like uh, traditional Texas offsets, which is the one with the firebox. Then we got a horizontal chamber. And then at the st smokestack end, we're gonna try to put a vertical on there. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to squeak all of that out of this tank because I literally haven't sat down with pencil and paper yet. So stay tuned, you're gonna travel with me through the whole process from conception to cooking some sausage on this thing. I'm excited, let's go. So I'm gonna take these, uh, we just hold this tank around here. I'm gonna take these chains off real quick and get these out of the way. By the way, if you don't have a pair of these game changer gloves, get on smokerplans.net and grab you some. So I had to use these slings because my chain wouldn't fit through this shackle here. So I had to really squeeze this thing in there. Now, one thing I do recommend if you're moving tanks around a lot is get you some of them uh, clevises. If you don't know what a clevis is, it's basically a U-bolt looking thing. It's real heavy and it's usually got a bolt that you can spin in there and tighten, or it's got a pin that you put in with the, and that hooks right in there like that. And then you can run your chain around that clevis. Those are real handy. When I, when I bought it from the guy, it was completely empty. So I'll have to get all these valves and everything out of here. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this wrench out and I'm just gonna start cranking. Um, sometimes these valves can be really hard to get out. So the first thing I'm gonna do, now this valve here is all the way open. The spitter, this is a little spitter valve here. That's totally out, so I know there's no pressure in here. If in fact you think there's pressure in your in your tank, you need to get rid of that first in a safe manner. Don't, don't risk it. So, spilt my coffee. I might have to get me a cheater bar. Let's see. Nope, got him. Okay, now my, my valve's hitting this plate here, so I gotta get rid of this float, because when I spin my valve around, it's hitting this these bolt heads. So one second, I'm gonna go get something to get that out of there with. Okay, so uh, you need a flat screwdriver for this to get this gauge out of there, but sometimes you can't just use a screwdriver. These things been in there, this is a 1950 tank, so sometimes you gotta use some persuasion Something I've had around since I was 19 years old working on furnaces and stuff and refrigeration is this little old eight inch pipe wrench. This thing has been with me for a long time and it really works good. You can, if you have to, you can put a pipe wrench on your screwdriver like this here. We've had to do that a bunch. You can kind of get that extra pressure, but you gotta, you gotta be square in the head of that screw when you're doing it. Another thing you can use is there's a, uh, there's an impact that you hit with a hammer that comes with that. I used to use those on boat motors. Okay, now I got that loose enough. I think once I get this screw out, I can get down to business. Broke it. <laughs> Broke it off. Okay, so we'll just use the pipe wrench. They ain't gonna get us down. Okay, I'm gonna try to take out this other thing. You just gotta kinda work with it, you know? I might need a cheater bar. You think I need a cheater bar? I'm gonna try hard. I may have to pull up on it. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm gonna need a cheater bar, hang tight. Now we gonna cheat. I got a bar. Here we go.
I need a bigger pipe wrench, but I don't want to buy one. That's my problem. See? Mama's over there sitting in the car watching, making sure I don't spend no money on tools. Let's see if I can go back to this one here. Oh yeah. Sometimes you gotta, it's like a puzzle. Sometimes you gotta take one out so you can get the others out. One. Goes mama, she's leaving. Now I can go buy a pipe wrench. <sighs> Yeah. So we need to count how many coffee cups I ruined in this video. <sighs> Got to cheat again. Oh yeah. Once you get it broke loose, Game on. Now, this is a uh, 14 inch aluminum, freaking expensive, rigid pipe wrench. It's a good wrench. I don't know that a Harbor Freight cheapie would do this with a big old cheater bar on the end, but never know. All right, here we go. Think I can get it this time? Nope, might hit myself in the mouth. Oh, felt the give. <laughs> you get <getting> this? <laughs> see. Ah! <sighs> so I'm, I'm sitting here thinking of my brother, my brother, uh, Paul Mata from HDM Smokers out of Houston, Texas. Um, I think anyway, somewhere down in there. And we was talking on the phone yesterday and they had to go buy a three foot pipe wrench and use a 10 foot cheater bar <laughs> to get their valve out of a thousand gallon. So now I'm gonna do the thing called the pipe wrench challenge. I wanna see what the smallest wrench you can use and still get your valves out of your tank. Submit your entries to Frank Cox and you'll send it to at Smoker Builder on Instagram, tag me in the photo, whatever. Let's see what the smallest pipe wrench you can use and get your valve out. I'll send you I Build Smoker's hat. Here we go. I'm setting the uh, challenge with a 14 inch pipe wrench on a big old valve without breaking the wrench. There we go. Bingo. Now something I've done in the past is if you can't, you just break them off, then you can pop this thing off. It's okay to break a screw off in there because we're gonna cut this whole thing out anyway. Now this float is kind of a bit of a trick to get out because it's got this action. Now I was lucky because I was able to rotate it up, which kept this arm from falling because that will snag when you get it up. So I was able to rotate it with that up. If you watched me, I did that like that. Now, if this was down this way, sometimes it falls all the way down, but some of them have a catch and you can't get that to break over. So it winds up coming up and snagging like this. So to get them out, if you can't get it out, just try to cut this off. Don't use sparks. Use something like a big old bolt cutter. Just cut this off and let this fall in the tank and get this out of the way. But that's how a float looks up in there. All right, let's get the old spitter valve out and we'll have full flow. Boom, there we go. There, okay guys, we're ready to purge.
I'm building, I'm building big old freaky cushions. So here's my firebox. It's going to match up into this cook chamber here, head to head. Door on that end. Cook chamber door. And we're going to do an upright warmer on the end. I will have an extra smokestack just on the main chamber so I can control it. Just run this tamper that shuts off the vertical, but the vertical is mostly for hanging sausage and stuff and whatever else I want to hang in there. So anyway, stay tuned.